Hello, this is Chris from Turn One Thoughtseize, and I am back with another Magic Online series. Uh, this one was actually a little bit tough to pick a deck. With rotation and bannings, we kind of knew were happening right around the corner. Uh, I was actually recording this on right right when the new BNR update came out the same day, uh, so I was. That's actually what kind of threw me in this direction. This was one of the two decks I was going to pick for videos. I wanted something that wasn't going to completely fall apart once the ban restricted update happened. Uh, and for the most part, I feel like this does that. Um, if anything, this is a type of deck that could almost splash for some of the things. Not Ancestral Visions, but maybe Thopter Foundry. Um, that being said, it is fairly close to traditional tokens. Our disruption spells are four Path to Exiles, uh, three Thought Seas, and four Inquisition of Kozilek. This allows us to be able to disrupt pretty much every opponent, um, with Inquisition being able to grab all the early plays, Thought Seas being able to grab pretty much everything, and Path being able to deal with any creatures, at least, that could be problematic. Um, a lot of times you're really only looking for wrath effects, which is why I think the third thought seize is really important. Uh, and and I could be persuaded into even going for thought seize because of the amount of life gain in the deck, but it is kind of a liability, so I didn't actually do that for these videos. Uh, our token producers for spectral procession, which are no surprise, for raise the alarm, which is a fine rate. Uh, for lingering souls, probably either the best or tied for the best with Spectral Procession token producer in our deck with the flashback and one Midnight Haunting because I wanted more token producers and these are all the spells that just produce tokens uh, to take advantage of our tokens we're running four Intangible Virtues which give all of your tokens plus one plus one Vigilance uh, very standard and then moving on to where we differ from token stacks are four Oath of Gideon which are not great when it comes to actually making tokens. It's three mana for two one ones. In our deck, the fact that they are ally creatures means nothing. We're not running any allies. I didn't try to explore and take advantage of that. Uh, putting too many brew elements in a deck at one time can often, it's just like a science experiment. You don't want to change too many variables all at once because then you don't know what it's actually affecting. So just stuck with the second ability of Oath of Gideon, uh, which is Planeswalkers you control enter the battlefield with an extra loyalty counter. So how do we take advantage of that? Well, we are running two Soren Solemn Visitors, which are just standard in tokens. They're amazing. He's amazing. Four mana, the plus ability. All your creatures get plus one, vigil uh, plus one in lifelink until your next turn. Just great, especially with Intangible Virtue, giving them vigilance and even more. They're swinging for three. You're gaining a bunch, and they can block and gain you three more, and they're huge, and it's fantastic. Uh, a Johnny Goldmane I really liked. So a Johnny Goldmane, the plus isn't great, you gain two life, sometimes that's relevant, it's normally not. The minus ability is cool because you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control and they gain vigilance. So for one turn it's intangible virtue and if you can keep activating it it's better than intangible virtue because your creatures it's counters so they're just going to get getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And putting a Johnny down and just having him be, he normally starts at four, starting him at five and immediately down ticking means if they bolt him, you are going to get a second activation, which is actually really huge. Other times, he's going to come down with five, you'll plus him, gain two life, and then next turn you can minus six and put a white creature token with this creature's power and toughness are equal to your life total, so you get a Sarah avatar. And that's potentially very powerful. Uh, and you're only one turn away. Same thing with Soren, Solemn Visitor. Uh, he comes down at four. Uh, you can plus him and immediately go to six with Oath of Gideon, and then you can minus six, and your opponent has to sacrifice a creature every upkeep. So it's just very, very powerful. And last, we have Elspeth Terrell. Uh, five mana, four loyalty planeswalker. Uh, her plus two ability, so she comes in at four, could go to six, or even could go to seven with Oath of Gideon. Um, or, yeah, seven. Um, 
gain a life for each creature you control. So a huge catch-up card against decks like Burn and Zoo. If you have a bunch of creatures, you can gain some life and then afterwards chump or start winning the game from there. If not, you can always minus two her and get three creature tokens. And then her minus five is destroy all the per all permanents uh, besides her, except for lands and tokens. So while she doesn't work great with your Oath of Gideon and your Planeswalkers, normally if you need to hit the emergency button, you don't care about that anyway, you're so far behind. So Elspeth Terrell makes a two-card combo with Oath of Gideon, uh, because she comes into play with five loyalty, so if you go Oath of Gideon, turn four, uh, make some tokens, turn five, Elspeth Terrell, destroy everything else, you might just be able to swing the game and pull out a win where you normally couldn't before. So it's mostly just in there for an emergency button. Uh, our land base has 8 white fetches, 15 actual mana sources, I am trying out 2 main deck ghost quarters, and 1 temple of silence. I don't think the liability of temple silence is worth not running it, the scry can be very powerful. Uh, in our sideboard we have 2 duresses for extra hand disruption because sometimes it's just very very good and we need it. Uh, I also have a murderous cut, this could be any sort of extra removal, this could be an oblivion ring for example. Um, but I chose Murderous Cut because mostly people are playing creatures right now. Um, I have two Disenchants, two Stony Silences for Affinity, and the Disenchants sometimes come in against other decks, like Death and Taxes runs a lot of sword variants. Uh, the fact that I had Disenchant in my board was actually how I won a match, uh, not recorded, so that was kind of cool. And then two Rest in Peace, these are kind of our specific deck hate cards. Uh, Rest in Peace nerfs our Lingering Souls and nothing else. We're fine running Rest in Peace. Over here we have our just generic kind of cards. Uh, three timely reinforcements for the aggro matchups. Um, normally the value from Lingering Souls isn't quite as relevant, and the value from Oath of Gideon is even less relevant than that uh, up against uh, Burn and Zoo opponents. So normally lingering uh, timely reinforcements will replace like two Oaths and a Lingering Souls, uh, and that way the deck can pretty much stay intact, but I have a much better card against Burn. Uh, I have two Hold the Line, which I'm testing out. It's one and double white instant. Blocking creatures get plus seven plus seven until end of turn. Uh, I can see this being useful against Infect, uh, Affinity, those sorts of decks where they're trying to swing with a huge creature and I need to stop them. Uh, this was originally in the deck for Eldrazi. Uh, after Eldrazi goes away, if it goes away, hold the line. Uh, might not be the best. Uh, another replacement for this slot could be something like uh, Spellskite, or the uh, five mana to destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Um, that's definitely a possibility. And lastly, I'm running an Elspeth Sun's Champion, six mana Elspeth, because she's very good. Uh, in matchups, in in control mirrors or mid-range mirrors, Elspeth's very good. She can run away with the game by herself. And in any mid-range matchup where they're playing big creatures, she's excellent because of her minus three to destroy all creatures. So all creatures with power 4 or greater, so it doesn't apply to your tokens, it applies to everything else, just a very, very good card. Um, so overall, I've enjoyed the deck so far, uh, I hope to keep enjoying the deck for these videos, and I hope you enjoy it as well. And I'll see you in the matches.